Where are you from? Iceland. Yeah, first time in Nepal? Yeah. How do you feeling? You come to Nepal? <laughs> I like it. Like it? Nepal? Yes. Yeah? yes. Small country, beautiful country, yeah? Over here by uh, bus. Uh, so they are protesting against that. With the inquiry we hit us for a type of hour sidan, we're on here now in Iskleverferd, so we're away from Isarpin in Eilistar. Fljótlega svona í kjölfæra á því að þá hérna minnist í að þetta við Ingvar hvort að hvernig honum lítist nú á það að það hérna fara að klífa fjöll í Himalæja fjöllunum. Hann stökk á þetta bara eins og þetta hefði átt að liggja fyrir honum bara daginn eftir og hérna og við fórum strax í það að skipulegja hennar leiðangur. Like for me this was a huge thing, it's not, you know, that I'm that experienced climber. I have been before to Elbrus, 5,642, and Mont Blanc, but nothing of the difficulties you're facing here. That's just plump, pity, plump, pity, plump. You know, not, nothing of a, of a climb. Og við duttum niður á Simon Yates. Hann er með þess að fyrirtæki sem sér um að, að skipulegja svona leðangra. I've been spending the last 20 years climbing mountains, basically. Um, sometimes climbing for myself on new unclimbed mountains or new unclimbed routes on mountains um, and some of the time doing this work taking people up mountains in various parts of the world. Flestir þekkja nú út frá því að þegar hann var rúmlega tvítugur að þá kleifan fjall í uh, Suður-Ameríku með hérna félaga sínum Joe Simpson og í þeirri ferð að þá urðu þeir fyrir því óhappi að Joe Simpson fótbrotnaði Simon Yates í, í, í viðleitni sinni við að bjarga félagan og niður af fjallinu og þá komst hann í þá aðstöðu að hann þurfti að velja á milli þess að skera á línuna eða þá að, sem sagt, að deyja bara með Joe Simpson og hann er sem sagt frægur að margir þekkja hann fyrir það að vera kallaði maðurinn með nýfinn af því hann skar sem sagt félagan hérna, úr línunni og hérna, sem hann náttúrulega hefur verið örglega hræðilegu hlutu fyrir hann að þurfa að gera. To me, it just seemed like the right thing to do under the uh, under the circumstances. Because there was no way that I could have, I couldn't maintain my position where I was. Sooner or later, I was going to be pulled from the mountain. I took the rucksack off and then managed to unzip the top pocket with one hand and get the pen knife out. I was absolutely sure that he was the right guy to do it with. I've been climbing mountains more or less since I was a little kid. And uh, about a year ago, I decided to uh, 
make this dream come true. And, and I started to look at what would be a reasonable target for me to uh, aim at with my skill as a mountaineer. I have a wife. We've been married for, for nine years now. Um, and two young children. One is three and a bit and one is one and a bit. A girl and a boy. I'm obviously very conscious of, of them all the time. I'm thinking of them all the time. And, uh, and because of that, I, I'm careful. I'm much more careful. Uh, I don't want to leave my uh, wife and my children without a, a husband and father, really. I have a very clear idea in my mind now of the, the level of risk that I'm prepared to take, and it's much, much lower than when I was younger. I'll just get myself comfy. This is a home for the next two or three weeks. Very nice. And we're away from all the other people because there's a lot of people in the in the, the big camp. Now we can <laughs> now we can relax, can't we? For a little while, <laughs> for half a day. So then we well for the surrenders. Magnet is all the same. Why am I? That's why everything that gets you three and twenty full score. The fire is all the way full surrenders. That's why take my time to get up now. That's why I'm in the mood. Yeah, I came here in 1994 and 1995, and uh, and I climbed Amdablam three times then with with groups of clients. Um, but as I say, it was different because in, in the meantime, this mountain has got very popular, and the, the, there are large groups of people here at the moment all wanting to climb the mountain at the same time. Uh, it's going to be a little complicated and a little political, I think, uh, in terms of who does the work breaking the trail and fixing the ropes. So until we get to camp one and find out exactly what's going on, I don't know the exact schedule, I suppose, for, for climbing this particular peak. Having been on a trip with uh, Simon, Simon Yates some years ago in Pakistan, gave him a call and he sort of he went from there really and hence I'm here sat at base camp having a shave <laughs> Five thousand eight hundred meters. So we've got we, we've got a long way between here and there. We've got like uh, thirteen hundred meters. So yeah, that's pretty, it's, pretty much. Uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be all right once we acclimatise. Yeah, yeah, we'll be able to do it in a day. But yeah. um, to begin with, it'll be it'll be hard work. Quite, uh, yeah, it'll be a, lot, a very long day. So uh, Henry was talking about ABC. Yes, yeah. another camp right. between here and yeah. uh, between here and the camp one. Which we've just used for one or two, just to just to get acclimatised. Yeah, the technical difficulties are after that. There's a long, rocky ridge to uh, Camp Two, which is above a, a steep rock tower. The Yellow Tower, which is the crux of the route, it's the most difficult part of the climb. And then beyond that, there's there's mixed climbing really, um, some steepish mixed climbing up to the site of Camp Three at around about 6,300 metres. And above there, it's it's. Well, it's snow ridges, really. It's a snow, snow face up around the, the, the Dablam and then a, um, a ridge, a snowy ridge that, that leads back up leftwards to the summit. And that part of the climb is, is not, not so technical, really. It's sort of 45 degrees ice and snow slopes. Sadly, in 2006, there was a terrible accident at Camp 3. A piece of the Dablam broke off crashed down through the camp, took away a number of tents 
and, well, six people were killed. Uh, three Sherpas, a British guy, and two Swedish. Previous days prior to the accident, uh, I was working the route between Camp 2 and Camp 3. We were quite slow on our trip. We were just losing our days and ended up having to the point where we had to call it quits and come home because we were running out of time. And then uh, when I heard that there was a big chunk of ice that came off of Camp 3 and landed right on top of the people on Camp 3 and killed some you know, Westerners as well as a few Sherpa friends, um, I'm not too surprised. I mean, I've been watching that glacier up high uh, slowly break down over the years. I'm just worried about this glacier that's still calving off on the one corner where the route is. And, you know, I, I, I just feel it, you know, last year was the first accident that happened, you know, on the mountain for a long time of that size. And I, I just think it's going to happen again because there is still a fair amount of ice up there that's going to break off and come down. So I'm going to take a break, I think, from this climb for a while and maybe go, go climb on Mount Pomari with people instead. Uh, what's happening now is we're going to walk up to a sort of intermediate camp, a camp between the base camp and the site of Camp 1. And the point of doing this is so that we acclimatise, basically, and don't make ourselves ill by going straight up to Camp 1. So we'll go up there today, put some tents there, come back down, and go up there and sleep a night tomorrow night. Um, and there are people now racing up there and doing everything, and some of them are going to get ill, and they're going to have to go back down again. And if we just do this slowly, we'll get it right first time, and, and in the long run, that will save us time. But, but at this point in time, it's like, oh, they're going up in front of us. Oh, dear, dear, yeah, you know, they're going to be ahead of us. And, and we've just got to focus on what we're doing and let other people what, do what they're doing, really. It's like it, it's just really now an intermediate camp for us to have a breather, you know, to, to acclimatise. And then I doubt that we will use it for sleeping in, but it will be used as a bit of a, a store by the sounds of it. Yeah. Very enjoyable. Yeah, we've had a good day. Now it's time for a bit of tucker. A bit late for lunch. <laughs> Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> Started to feel the air getting thinner there. Simon didn't feel it. Oh, I did. Really? Yeah, I did towards the top. Yeah, no, and I felt it. Yeah, and I felt a bit dizzy putting the tents up. Yeah, it was quite a yeah, hard work. Yeah, lifting the rocks to, yeah. to, put, to yeah. put around the guy ropes. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. High altitude weight lifting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's uh, only four people. Let's see what we got. We've got some nice potatoes in there. We've got some... The thing about these is... Ninja patties in there. That doesn't normally... Some need vegetables. And... Ooh, fish. Lovely. Especially for the Icelandic. Especially for those people, isn't it? Lovely. Right, spud, Henry. Oh, yes, please. This eye is pray. God pray.
Yeah, we, we put the tent up yesterday. We haven't had to do that today. <laughs> but our Sherpas have carried some some cooking kit and some gas up for us, so quite cold now, though. Clouds rolling in. Marvellous. Right. Hey. You see, but I'm not going to go after that. There are a bit. Where are my type of most of your right? Let's have a look. You all right? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Good. Just took it slow. Dizzy. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. So you knew before I'm there, Malcolm? No. No, he's the son of somebody I know. Okay. Yes. <laughs> It's a small world, this uh, climbing world. What do you want, boys? Sausage or meatballs? <laughs> <laughs> you, you split it up. It's, no, it no, 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 you can have a choice tonight. Sausage or meatballs? Sausage? Yeah, sausage. Yeah. So we, we, we'll not be going up to one tonight? Or? No, 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 it's tomorrow. Just tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. Mackerel or herring? You yes, choose. Herring, please. Okay. Herring. Right. Come on, sauce. Eric, wait, you're my crawl then. You saw no, he drew a shell, eh? Eh, what? Manu, you're a little bit of 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 a little Det är alltid ågående. We've had a reasonable night here, so we're going to go up to Camp One, which is about 300 metres higher and about an hour and a half walking from up here, and uh, see how we get on there. Just take it easy when we get there. The guys uh, are bringing some more loads up from the base camp, so they should get up to us. Not, probably not long after we get there, actually. Um, and then tomorrow, I'm hoping we can get onto the ridge. This is the most fun I've had in a long time with my clothes on. Hvernig hefur við gera þetta? Þetta er þetta bara eitthvað rugl. Þetta er fallegt, þetta er það. Já. Það er bara eitthvað nýtt og sérsamlega. Ok. Simon, þetta er þetta kolling. Kan þú hérna mig? Þetta er þetta fæn. Þetta er þetta kemp 1. Þetta er þetta til þetta tent sýn. Þetta er þetta kettle on. You're good? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all relative at this altitude, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. A, a little bit of attic, but... I think, that, so. I think you'll find if you yeah. just have a drink in that. Exactly. I think we're going to be able to make reasonably quick progress, really. Which is good. We've got to get on with it. Get the brew ready for these. For our boys, they're at the bottom of the ropes down there that come up to the camp. It would be quite a nice thing to do to have a cup of tea ready for them when they get here. Tony! Hi. We just put our gators on here. Uh, sorry? We just put on yeah, yeah. our gators on. Yeah, yeah. Tony, you've got to hurry up, you've got the tea. <laughs> you have this one. This one's a good one, I think. Or maybe, no, maybe you have that one and then we have these two. That's good. That's great. Simon. Yes. You need help for tomorrow or no? We have just robbed this one. Just this. Only this, yeah? Because we piece, meters. We piece from here too. Sure, to there. Here. Yeah. And now I think somebody yeah, is, oh, is oh, fixed oh, after. Yeah. Maybe it's fixed to camp too, I think. Yeah. You're right. Buggered. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely buggered. But you're ready for a cuppa, aren't you, Tony? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> 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 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel? Can I swear? <laughs> and here comes the barrel. Right. <laughs> yeah, Gorak proof. It's to keep the old chuffs and ravens out. They're pretty tough guys. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Simon calling Henry over. Yeah. Now to mate. Ai, ég er bara alveg að, ég er að drepast, ég hef aldrei fengið svona hausverk á eivinu held ég á þér. If Vidal's got a headache at this sort of altitude, um, first time up, he should drink minimum of a litre, and if he's still got a headache after that, I'll give him a paracetamol. So we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, but I'll give you some of this tang because you'll be able to drink that cold, yeah? <sighs> you know, what I'd be really concerned with is if your very bad headache turns into a pounding headache, you start hallucinating, you know, th th things like that. The other big concern is, you know, if you start to get fluid on your lungs. We're in our tent drinking tea. That's right. Where to do on a Thursday afternoon? <laughs> it's not much to do, so we're just drinking, lying around. Having some quality time. Yeah, very good. Yes, here we are having a wonderful time. Actually, I'm reading one of Simon's book. Tell. I came here around one o'clock, spending the day in the tent. And tomorrow, hopefully, to camp too. And Vidar is feeling better? A little bit. <laughs> never ever had a headache like this before. But I've never been. A to an altitude like this before. I could tell her it's useless, come on. So I'm calling Henry over. How are you? It's quite cold and damp down here. Well, it, it's glorious up here, actually. We're up above the cloud and it's really, really pretty. Um, we're all okay, uh, but Vidal's a bit, he's got a bit of a headache and Tony's sort of didn't struggle, but was was slow today. So I think they, Tony and Vida, might well come down first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, from what you've said, that's prudent because we're not in that much of a hurry, having heard how things are going up the hill over. Exactly, and, and what I was thinking then was that uh, Ingvar and I will will go up the ridge a little bit. You know, he can get some film and things, and then we'll come down as well. Oh, so you're coming down? To, you're all coming down tomorrow over? Yeah, I think so, but, but I don't think, at the moment, it's serving much purpose, sort of, sitting up here. I think the way things look at the moment, certainly, that, that, that's, that's a good thing, and this is pretty normal. The, there aren't a lot of other people up here, you know, um, Westerners, really, there's just a, a lot of Sherpas doing stuff up here, and, uh, you know, we're, we're well up there with everybody else. Yeah, in fact, you're ahead. The thing is that they'll be going, and I was talking to Pizarro about this, it's just they'll be going and putting in their camp trees over. But from what I've seen, looking at it, it looks very stable, the right-hand side. OK, I think that what happened was an absolute aberration, and I don't think it's about to happen again. But I've got to come up and have a look at it, that thing first, over. Yeah, I can understand that. You know, you, you come up and have a look. I've had a good look at it today, and as I say, it looks, it looks very solid, that right-hand side. And if the boys don't want to stay there in the night, you know, for a night, I quite understand that. Um, but but we don't actually have to have them there overnight. Didn't sleep at all, and I had this horrible headache. I, I was feeling nauseous and dizzy, and I don't know, you know, I just felt horrible. I had no no control over the 
situation, you know. I just, I just felt weak and uh, I couldn't perform like I'm used to do. So it was, uh, it was quite a shock for me. <laughs> so you're ready, Tony? Goodbye, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you at base camp. Sounds already getting soft. A bit breathless after that. <laughs> it's quite a quite a pull. <laughs> anyway, it's done. What a view. Fantastic. We're very yeah. lucky to be up here. So look, carry on or just what do you think? <laughs> Should we go down and have a brew? <laughs> I mean we're not gonna go and go up the tower, are we? No. I'm I'm ready Four. to turn back. Yeah, yeah. It's been great. Just to, you know, get the hang of it. Yeah, yeah. Me on there. I'm ready to go. It's a bit easier than coming up, anyway. So we're having a puja ceremony. Um, the guys have decided that this is a good day to do it. This is a, the best day to do it, and they've brought a, a lama up from the monastery in Tangboche, and uh, he's going to bless the expedition really, and uh, and all its members, and hopefully that will bring us good fortune for the client. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling okay right now. Uh, my girlfriend, Hulta, she's uh, arriving now uh, from Iceland. She was supposed to be with us on this trip, but uh, she got sick before we went, and uh, so she didn't come. But she's coming now, and uh, <laughs> I feel pretty good about that, of course. She landed in uh, Lukla uh, this morning or yesterday, and uh, she's hiking up now here to base camp, and she's gonna spend uh, the last days with us, and uh, it gives me a little strength. <laughs> you know, it makes me feel better just to know that she's coming, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice. Uh, I will be really privileged to, uh, to be climbing behind the Icelandic team. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of this trip, I'll learn one or two words of Icelandic. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. why not? We, we can sit down and work on that. I need to know the word for safe, yeah, good rope, and yeah. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> OK, OK. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> we work on that. Passar and uh, I gave her a call, which led to that uh, I'm not going up today like the rest of the group. I want to go down there and meet her, and my plan is to go out there in the morning and meet the group tomorrow night. I hope it's going to work out. <laughs> but I've made it quite clear to him that if he wants to sort of have a, a crack at the mountain, that he needs to be back at, up at Camp 1 by tomorrow evening. Okay, good. See you then. Yeah, yeah, have a nice time in Pangbaiche. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Is there enough food for tonight? Sort of macaroni or something going up? My friend. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much. Our Sherpas are very talented and strong climbers, uh, Padawa in particular. 
he's been to the summit of Everest nine times. In 2006, he went to the top twice within a week, and he doesn't exactly know how many times he's climbed Amada Blam. He thinks it's somewhere between 25 and 30 times. Bit cold at the moment. Yep. Bit of afternoon cloud. What time is it? It is two. So we've been. We've been going three hours. So we're doing quite well, really. Okay. <coughs> uh, we go to one today. We we go on the ridge tomorrow. Uh, we move up to three the following day, and um, and we'll, we'll go to the summit the day after that. Um, the way people are moving on the mountain, uh, that also that sounds like that will happen. I think things will happen according to uh, according to my, my little plan. But <laughs> so, so I'm happy. <laughs> you ready, Tony? Yep. <coughs> slowly, slowly, eh? Into thin air. <laughs> Well, basically, there's a bit of weather coming in, um, and this guy's been carrying our stuff up, but I'm not very happy that, you know, that he goes a lot further than this, takes our stuff up to the camp one, and then has to come down in the dark or something like this. So I've sent him down now, so he'll get down fine and won't have any trouble. What? And you're in all my clothes now? Yeah, yeah. And I think it will be OK. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll be fine, but I just didn't want yeah. this guy to have a bad time, no. you know. We're going to take some of this food and things up, and stash the rest, and I'll come and get it tomorrow. Doing? A bit cold and a bit wet, but uh, other than that, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> a bit tired. Went up to camp two today. Good, good, good. Yeah. How was the tower? The tower's fine. A bit um, hard work, okay. <laughs> but the views are good. It's not very nice that way. Yeah, it's not very nice either way, really. It, it cleared up just before we got to the tent. Wet clothes and stuff, but the areas are gear, so we should be all right. Thirsty. Thirsty, but uh, not so bad. <laughs> Have you eaten? We've had a little to eat. Oh, yeah. um, we've, uh, we've had one cup of tea, and we're just going to have another cup of tea, and probably another cup of tea, and another cup of tea, <laughs> and then uh, we might feel quite normal by then, I reckon. OK. <laughs> I had chicken. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <sighs> and we were just <laughs> supposed to be here, three of us. <laughs> I'm kind of happy I'm the only one. <sighs> uh, any news of Vera? 
No, there's no news of Vida. Um, I've spoken with Henry on the on the radio, and the last time I spoke to him, he was still not back at the base camp. We had a kitchen boy walking up here with some food, um, and I stashed all the food that he was carrying up under a boulder. Um, today, our Sherpas have come up and they, they couldn't find it because it's I suppose it's fairly well hidden. Um, so I'm going to go back down and get it and bring it back up here. I think it's probably an hour down and something an hour and a half to two hours up. That's assuming <laughs> I don't get caught in another, another storm again. Storm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tired. Did you go far? No, not very far. Just round the corner and up a bit. I'm too old for this guy. How was it, Simon? I found the, uh, the bag of food quite easily. We're all ready to go. I've heard that the snow's quite deep up there, but which is why they're going quite slowly. But we'll, we'll see. But I think they should get to the summit tomorrow, people. Which is perfect for us. <laughs> so did um, did Vidar did they did they say anything or just cheerio really? Uh, they were very nice. Um, hmm. he, he said it, he decided yesterday that they weren't up. For, he wasn't up for it. It wasn't working for him. And so he just wanted to get down and out. And I said fine. And you guys would bring down his kit and um, and he can go out with you and Ingar. And, and his girlfriend had an atrocious headache. Yeah, I gave him some oxygen and, and sent them back down the hill as quick as could. Didn't even stay for lunch. Oh, right, so they're off there and they're, they're, they're back to Kathmandu and on the, the next kerosene budgie back to Iceland, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I, think that's sort of, I think that's probably it. It might be going to the trial. I, I don't know. <laughs> OK, speak to you later. Some news. Some news, yes. I have to admit that it came to me a, it's quite a shock that we has decided to leave. Um, and it's not surprised. I'm not surprised that Hilda got sick because she came up quite fast. And yeah, you're not coming. No, I'm not. Uh, I didn't have a very good night last night, and uh, still not where I need to be to uh, to climb this thing. It's a pity. Yeah, it's a shame, but uh, I think it's a sensible thing to do. To be honest. I'm in no state to do any technical climbing up there. How are you doing, Simon? I'm good. I feel very good today. We've uh, made a quick start and uh, we've sort of got in front of a Traffic jam, really. <laughs> Very nice view from here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> Very beautiful. So we're not far from the Yellow Tower. No. Those, the, the guy up there that we can see with the orange rucksack or whatever it is, he's on top of the Yellow Tower. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Still 
very good. Yeah, it's vertical. Yeah, it's good. Doesn't look too bad. Not bad, I tell you. It's like 10, 15 meters yeah. of vertical. The rest is easy. Ah. You'll piss it. I guess so. I guess. <laughs> What uh, most people struggle with on this, yeah, this is the technically most difficult bit of the mountain. He's not making it look difficult, is he? Bit of cold power climbing. Yeah, yeah. He's got your sleeping bag on his on his back just for a bit of extra ballast. It's a good old traffic jam now. Yes, this way. Yeah, now right. Go over there. Yes. Yes, jump, jump. You have ring back, then jump. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now it's coming out. Just out of breath. I made it. Yeah, we've both made it. <laughs> I suddenly got cramps in my fingers, just like. Ah. That's great. Best company, best day. Where, where is our break? Here, camp two. Oof. This must be the worst shit all on earth. Smell. You have children? Two. Two. How old? One is each, one is four. Right, minus three and one. Oh. <laughs> Very small. Right, let's get me true zoot. Grey Tower. Look at that now. It's better to have two carabines here. I just couldn't find it.
about 10 minutes. Oh, good. I'm ready for it. A nice cup of tea, I feel. Simon is there. Yes. Tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pasta. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Good one. Jiggy tea. Yeah, we got some tea on. <laughs> uh. Nice spot. Yeah. Tired, but happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you okay, Seven? Yeah, I'm good. Just a sneeze. Here's our chem tree. It's great. Yeah. Good, isn't it? Yeah. First time come through here? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Those in, eh? Now, now don't get, try not to get a load of snow or ice on you, eh? So if you, put, if you give me those now, I'll put them in the tent. There's no ice or tent, you know, there's nothing in the tent at the moment. Nice touch of having these two tents here. Yeah. You know, the actual cup three. Hello, we're. Uh... We're all snug in our tents up here. They've got two lovely little spots actually on the on the mushroom ridge, so it's uh, it's good. They're a little below three, but they're obviously as safe as houses, and um, yeah, and they're very comfortable. So our plan is to go get going reasonably early tomorrow morning if it's not windy and cold, and see where we end up at the end of the day, really. How many people passed you going to three over? Yeah, there's a load of people going now that we passed earlier on, and that they're, they're still on their way to three. There's probably like half a dozen of them. Yeah, I'm saying we're Yeah, I'll try and get them in the morning anyway, over. Oh, right. <laughs> Hello. Hello, you... Miss Hugo. How are, how are you doing? Fucking naked. Okay, yeah. well, I hope you have a good night and um, I'll switch on in the morning at uh, sort of seven ish, over. Okay, uh, we'll speak to you then. Okay, my regards to you all. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> are you okay, Hugo? I'm just knackered, moving slow. It's fucking cold out here now. No, I know. It, you've got about another 20 minutes, half an hour, I think, to, to camp oh, three. Yeah, at least. It's on top of that next lump, you know. Make us another cup of tea, and I'm going to make us a, a ready meal. What do you reckon? Ooh. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I have to have. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I really don't feel like eating at the moment, but... You've got to... You've got to push it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've just got to eat it. No problem. Hamburger and beans. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't sound bad. Sausage and beans. No, thank you. I've had that. Sausage and beans, so, right. There was a guy down there who said there were four avalanches. 
last night in Camp 3. What, down here? Yeah. Yeah. We got to Camp 3 late in the evening and it was after dark, everyone was very tired because we'd come from Camp 1. Uh, we had heard that, you know, obviously the story from last year when the climbers had died at Camp 3, so I was lying there and all of a sudden I heard one of the most terrible sounds of my life was the crack, the crack and woof of the ice breaking. And I could hear the ice rushing down in an avalanche towards the tent and right, it seemed like right at the moment when it was going to hit, as I was curled into a ball, it rushed by the side of the tent and you could feel the breeze on the tent. I haven't been that scared and that helpless. You lie in your sleeping bag and you just, you can't do anything. It's too cold, dark, and you're too tired to get up and move. It'd be too dangerous to try and do that. My first thought was, uh, as the ice was crashing down, how is this going to hurt? How is it going to hurt me? And it was, it just, I, I couldn't believe it. I was still alive. I, right after that, my next thought was, this was the last thing that the people last year heard before they were killed went over to the tent of my Sherpa, and he was very scared. I said, Dendi, we can't stay here. And he said, no, no, I'm not staying here. I'm too scared, I'm going down. You know, the mountain's too dangerous. I said, yes, I agree, it's too dangerous. We, we have to come down. We got very, very lucky last night. So for us, it meant that our climb was over. It would be nice to have more rope here. Yeah, but I think you'll be okay if you take it slowly. Can you hear me, Henry? Yeah, not very really loud, but I can hear you. All oh, right, we're 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 just having a rest. We're, we're at the bottom of the snow ridge now, Henry. Far out, so there's no one in front of you. We got two guys. We got one member, one Sherpa in front of us. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll be on our way in sort of five or ten minutes, so you'll see our group of four behind the the, the, the two in front. Okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Simon. Ah, difficult. Same, same. The summit, one hour. I can make it. Ah. Put your feet on either side of the crest. Okay. It's just Simon. I don't want to fall this direction. I think I see a rope up on here. Yeah, there's another rope, isn't there? Yeah. It's just a bit of a gap for some reason. It's a beautiful day. Right. The perfect day. Where are you from? Montreal, Quebec. Ah, right. Yeah. You like it? Yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah. This is where the rope's end. Yeah. We're good. Hi. Hi. We're all done. I'm all done. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Hey. Hey. All done. Oh. I recognize this one. Yeah, I guess so. Man, that's cold. It's good. It feels very nice. It's a little cold. Don't worry. Yeah, this is not worry. We've got Kanchenjunga in the distance. 
the third highest mountain in the world. Here, this pointed mountain is Makalu, which is the world's five, fifth highest mountain. And then if we go left here, we're looking at Lhotse, the world's fourth highest mountain. And just to the left of it, beyond the ridge of Nupsi, is Everest, the world's highest mountain. And then if we go left again, right over here, we're looking at Chihuahua, which is the world's sixth highest mountain. And way, way in the distance is Shishapagma, the world's 11th highest mountain or something like that. And all of these mountains are over 8,000 meters in height. And this is me. <laughs> yes. Thanks for taking me. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. But, uh, but now oh, I also. But now uh, it's done a lot of hard work. Yes. Just a day. <laughs> this climb is the most difficult I've ever done in my life. And I'm a happy camper. Call the Tower of Jutland. A good day in the mountains, as they say in Iceland. I'm a fortunate man. Um, I've been able to fashion a life uh, around what I love doing most, which is climbing big mountains. Um, and I make a, a living out of that now. Um, it's not been easy but at times. It's, uh, I've devoted 23 years of my life to this now, and uh, there's been quite a lot of hardship and tears and various other emotions uh, on the way. Uh, but uh, I hope to carry on doing this as, as long as my sort of body and mind allows me, really. Um, I can remember being asked by a, an interviewer once, you know, um, are you going to stop climbing mountains when you've made enough money from it? And to me, that completely misses the point. I do this because I love it. And if I stop loving it, then I'll stop doing it. And there are easier ways to make money. <laughs> there are a lot easier ways to make money. <laughs> <laughs>